Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we're tracking for you. India's Prime Minister Modi, Japanese counterpart Kishida vow to expand ties. Pakistan's ex-PM Imran Khan pledges legal action against police after home raid. And Afghan business women seek out foreign markets amid domestic economic woes. And now for all the details, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and his Japanese counterpart Fumio Kishida on Monday held extensive talks in New Delhi and vowed to expand the India-Japan Global Strategic Partnership, stressing that it is important for a peaceful, stable and prosperous Indo-Pacific. Modi referred to India's presidency of the G20 and Japan chairing the G7 grouping and said it is the best opportunity to work together on priorities of both sides for global good. The Japanese PM said that his country will continue to invest in India's development story. He also unveiled on Indian soil his plan for a free and open Indo-Pacific. Last year, during his visit to India, Kishida had announced an investment target of 5 trillion yen over the next five years. India-Japan relations were elevated to the Special Strategic and Global Partnership in 2014. After vandalization and attempt of replacing the Indian tricolor with the Khalistan flag by separatist and extremist elements at the Indian High Commission in London, six in Indian capital New Delhi staged a protest on Monday against the incident. Waving the Indian national flags outside the British High Commission, the protesters condemned the action by Khalistani elements. Early on Sunday, India's foreign ministry also summoned UK's top diplomat to convey a strong protest. The vandalization had taken place after the police crackdown of Khalistan sympathizer Amritpal Singh and his aides in India's Punjab state. Singh and fellow members of his group, Waris Punjab, they have been charged with attempted murder, attack on the police and spreading communal disharmony, among other charges. The police have arrested over 100 people so far, but Amritpal was still absconding till the last reports came in. in वो भारत के साथ है और भारत का कोई भी अपमान हम बर्दाश्त नहीं करेंगे and Pakistan's former Premier and opposition PTI chairman Imran Khan has announced he will take legal action against police for breaking into his house on Saturday. In a video address, Khan said he felt devastated to see the destruction at his residence and looting of his belongings. He alleged police action was in violation of the court order and that he will file contempt of court case against them. The police had entered Khan's property and clashed with supporters after Khan arrived in Islamabad for the court appearance to address charges of unlawfully selling state gifts. Khan accused the government planned to kill him or eliminate him from the political scene. He said if it happens, things may go out of hand and people of Pakistan will forget Sri Lanka's default crisis and may witness the Iran-like revolution. The PTI chief announced he will also hold a public rally on Wednesday. अब हम बुद्ध को कर रहे हैं मनारे पाकिस्तान और मैं चाहूंगा कि सारा पाकिस्तान देखे रेफरेंडम होगा वो कि कौम खड़ी किधर है and as work options for women have shrunk in Afghanistan under the Taliban rule, dozens of Afghan businesswomen took part in an exhibition to promote carpets, jewelry, dried fruits and other handmade goods as part of a push to access international markets. They said they would not give up. Dozens of Afghan businesswomen recently took part in an exhibition in Dubai remotely to promote carpets, jewellery, dried fruits and other handmade goods as part of a push to access international markets after work options for women have shrunk in Afghanistan under the Taliban administration. Due to visa and travel restrictions, most business owners joined the three-day expo virtually from Kabul where they said some restrictions on women in public life as well as the country's struggling economy were hampering their businesses. 
the exhibition organized by the United Nations Development Program and the Afghan Women's Chamber of Commerce and Industry concluded on Saturday and included 26 female-run businesses. National trade fairs are a way for women to open to access new markets internationally and it is more important than ever when the domestic market is struggling so much. The International Labour Organization recently estimated that 25% of women's jobs had disappeared since the Taliban took power in 2021. Many women, they noted, had turned to home-based businesses which had stopped the female employment figures falling further. شرایط بعدی که کابل سقوط کرد افغانستان سقوط کرد ما خیلی ناامید شده بودیم که شاید افغانستان برگشت به 20 سال قبل اما خانم های افغانستان خیلی مبارز هستند مبارزه میکنن مبارزین اقتصادی هستیم ما ما اجازه نمیتیم به هیچ عنوان که ما کاربار خود از دست بتیم یا بر حکومت واجی شویم ما خیر ما همیشه مبارزه کردیم و هنوز هم مبارزه میکنیم افغانستان's economy has been severely hampered amid foreign sanctions the Taliban administration has banned many female NGO workers and some Taliban-run ministries do not allow female staff to work in their offices. The businesswomen, however, said they would not give up. Members of the Gilgit Baltistan Assembly recently staged a protest against the government for not convening assembly sessions since last October, while it plans to introduce land reforms in the occupied region. A report. Members of different political parties held a protest recently outside the Gilgit Baltistan Assembly building for not convening a session since the last six months, terming the move against the spirit of democracy. Member of the Assembly, PPP leader Shehzad Agha said they want to debate important issues including wheat crisis and the proposed Land Reforms Act. But the PTI government in the region has refused to do so. He said massive protest will be held if authorities bring out any legislation without a debate. Gilgit Baltistan ke in baasiyon se bache khuche agar jo zameen hamare paas bachta hai unko adhyane ki koshish ki gai hum barpoor muzahimat karenge. Locals and activists have opposed the proposed land reforms fearing it is another attempt orchestrated by Islamabad to change the demography of the occupied territory. They accuse Pakistan, which rules the region through a proxy, does not grant the locals any political rights, but exploits the region and its resources. Raham Sahai Prasad Yadav was sworn in as the third vice president of Nepal on Monday in a special ceremony at the office of the president in Kathmandu. Newly elected president Ram Chandra Padel administered the oath of office and secrecy to Yadav. A minister and the former PM Deobar's government, Yadav, was elected to the post of vice president on March 17th after he secured a comfortable majority over his main contender, Ashd Lakshmi Shakya of CPN UML. He's the first to assume the office from Madhesh region, which borders India. He started his political journey in 1990 with Nepal's Sadbhavna Party and had an active role in the first Madhesh movement. He held the portfolio of Forest and Environment Ministry in the previous government. And India's first fully automated biryani dispensing kiosk in southern Chennai city is bringing gastronomical delight to food lovers by delivering hot meals through an entirely manless system. Inspired by Japan's self-serving kiosks, the kiosk installed by a startup company by Vitu Kalyanam has machines where customers can choose from an extensive menu and get the biryani within three to five minutes. The kiosk offers biryani ranging from nearly $2 to $24. India's number one uh, like self-service all. So that's why I came to visit here. I ordered a chicken biryani and the experience is too good and the biryani is too hot. The kiosk is functional to 3 a.m. to cater to the midnight cravings of the customers. Though several Indian shops and marketplaces have automated vending machines, which usually have canned or packed food, this is the first attempt in the country to serve fresh food using a manless dispensing system. Well, that's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.